Hi everyone, it's good to have you here, and welcome back to another episode of Conservation Storytelling, hosted by myself, Matt. So this week, my guest is Simon Capon, who is the Business Development Manager for the Ghana Resort Conservation Trust, or the GCT. The GCT is a newly formed partnership between the Zimbabwe Wildlife and Parks Authority and the Frankfurt Zoological Society. The Frankfurt Zoological Society has been a part of the management of Ghana Resort for the last 20 years. Just to give you a little bit of context about Ghana Resort, Ghana Resort forms a part of the GLTP, which is the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park, which involves South Africa's Kruger National Park, Mozambique's Gaza National Park, and Zimbabwe's Gonorizo National Park. So we're talking about a massive area. Anyway, our conversation this week evolves around the impact that COVID-19 has had on the area, particularly down in Gonorizo and on the GCT operational front. Anyway, without too much more, here's my conversation with Simon. We're going to go straight into well, how the Gonorizo Conservation Trust has been affected by COVID-19 and what changes, mm. well, let's talk about the challenges first. When, when this COVID-19 all, all started out, um, I think we did all underestimate it to a certain extent. And, and you know, we're seeing now the major effects it's having globally um, on economies worldwide, I think. For us, obviously, um, in conservation uh, and related to that tourism, tourism seems to be the industry that that's hit almost hardest from this from this COVID nineteen and all the travel restrictions around that. Um, you know, for us, tourism contributes a significant part of our budget each year and and really allows us to do do a lot of work in protecting the park and. You know, since the the lockdown measures and the restrictions and everything from from this pandemic, we haven't we've obviously closed down the park to tourism, and we haven't had any tourists coming to the park, which which is a big problem for us because although um, you know we've closed the park, the business of conservation doesn't stop. You know, we still have to protect the park. Uh, we still have to employ people. We still have the costs that go that go with that. So. So you know we've had to we've had to adjust our operations a lot. We've had to look at halting um, a lot of infrastructure projects in the park and and focusing funds uh, more on things like staff welfare and and making sure we can continue to employ people in the park. You know one of our focuses in Gonorizo is really employing people from the local community around around the park. So I think about. 85 odd percent of our staff come from communities directly adjacent to the park and you know just just through that employment um, we can contribute back to to the local economy around the park and really I suppose you know a healthy local economy in a way uh, contributes to a healthy park and so we you know we we believe that we've got to continue as far as we can um, helping employ people from the local community and that means obviously shifting a lot of our funding and delaying some of the projects that we were planning for this year. You know, apart from the tourism aspect, how have your donors responded in terms of financing your your projects? I suppose it's it's a difficult one because um, you know we have we have various different donors. We have very committed donors to the park. But obviously, everyone's hit by the same uh, pandemic at the moment, and so we are seeing um, some potential scalebacks of our donor funding, um, which is going to impact on us in the longer term. And so we're really going to have to think hard about how we prioritise our funding from here going forward. Um, I think so many conservation areas are in the same boat. You know, we are concerned about it, but you know, we've got to carry on. You know the, the real work that we're doing for conservation has to carry on. So Simon, when a tourist comes and stays down at Ghana Resort, what are they essentially actually paying for at the end of the day? Because it's a lot more than just a bed night. You know, when, when a tourist comes to Ghana Resort, 
they're not really paying for the bed that they're sleeping in. You know, what they're paying for is to see those elephants playing in the pan and to hear that hyena or that lion calling at night while you're sitting around your campfire. That's really what, what you're paying for. Um, you're paying for the ecosystem services that a park like Pumiso produces. The bigger, I suppose the bigger picture of it is that we're really paying for conservation. Um, and in Gonorizo, your money goes directly back into the park and we reinvest it in, in the protection of the park itself. So for us, that, that's a huge role that tourists play in the park is that their support is coming directly back to us in the park. You know, there's a much more deeper, deeper meaning to what people are paying for when they come to a protected area like Gona Reserve. Sure, and I think it's well, basically a message to the people now that local tourism has often been overlooked in the especially in the last 10, 15 years when international travel has become a lot easier. I think this pandemic has given a good light for us to turn around and place value and emphasis back on what we have on our own doorstep and to start appreciating places like Conorizo once again. I think travel will be looked at very differently coming out of this. Um, and, you know, certainly for us in a place like Gonorizo, we hope to see some recovery in, in the local market um, and try and get as many Zimbabweans into a place like Gonorizo to enjoy their natural heritage and really get an opportunity to appreciate what, what we have in Zimbabwe. Simon, thanks so much for joining me on this conversation. It's been great to hear your insight. Just on parting, is there any message that you want to leave with us? You know, when it's safe to do so, uh, travel, uh, come and see these conservation areas, um, celebrate them, support them, stay safe. Everyone, thanks again for stopping by and listening to another episode of Conservation Storytelling. If you enjoyed this episode with Simon, please be sure to go and listen to the full podcast, which is also linked in the description to this blog. Guys, thanks so much and have a good day. Cheers.